this is Unity XG here. We're going to be going over a tutorial on how to program your Harris Unity XG100 portable radio. Uh, if you're familiar with Motorola, you'll find that the software differences between CPS and Harris Radio Personality Manager are quite different. Um, the Radio Personality Manager by Harris, at least in the uh, RPM1 version, uh, likes to use the tree view. So if you're familiar with the Astro 25 series CPS, then this should be pretty easy for you. Uh, there's a little bit different terminology between the two, and we're going to go over that terminology uh, together as we program a radio, and we're going to be using a tutorial mission plan. So there's a huge difference between Motorola and Harris. Uh, Motorola calls their uh, programming files code plugs and Harris calls them mission plans so what makes that different between the two well there's a couple of different things put into the radio so when I'm around Atlanta I will load that mission plan to do my scanning or listening or hamming um, for amateur radio on my Atlanta mission plan and then when I go down to Pensacola I may do my uh, Pensacola mission plan. I may have an entirely different mission plan or quote code plug for that region. So that's a really big benefit to the Harris Unity XG100P and the XG100M and subsequent radios such as the XL200P which we'll also go over in a different video uh, over the Motorola. Um, <clears throat> but however you can stack a lot of zones in the Motorola. Uh, Harris doesn't call them zones, they are called sets and uh, we'll be going over that in the software here when we get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, if you have just programmed your Harris Unity, uh, I'm sorry, just purchased your Harris Unity radio, what I want you to do first is go to options. And after we go to options, what we want to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom here and go to Unity XG 100 portable options. So if you uh, want to set up your front panel programming for this radio, for example, mine and mine is 2789, something easy to remember. It's my birthday, right? March 27th, 1989. And you want to set your U, uh, user UI privilege level to full and you want to select optimize conventional P25 battery life. And the next thing you want to do, which will be pretty important to you, is select your programmable buttons, knobs, and shortcut menu. So this is the way I have mine set up. My uh, top side button is talk around and repeater. Uh, my middle side button is system down wrap, and my bottom uh, side button is system up wrap. So what does that mean, system down wrap and system up wrap? Well, uh, let's say I have three uh, zones or systems, like Harris likes to call them. Uh, what I can do <clears throat> is if I want to cycle through those systems, I can cycle to system one, system two, system three, and when I get to system three, whenever I press uh, system up again, it's going to, uh, instead of stopping at system three, it's going to wrap back up to system one. So you kind of, it's kind of like putting systems on a carousel. So when you get to the end, instead of just being at the end, you can just hit your uh, uh, bottom side button again and wrap it up. But then again, you have different options here. You may want something different than what I have. And there's a ton of different options to choose from, just whatever suits you best. Uh, no delays on those, by the way. No need for that. Uh, the programmable knobs. Uh, I do not have encryption on this uh, radio. And I just set up my uh, concentric switch, as Motorola likes to call it. Uh, onto the scan on and scan off. Um, I figured that was the best because I do like to use the uh, A, B, and C three position switch and uh, that's a really cool feature on this uh, radio is let's say you have a uh, system or a conventional frequency set with 32 channels you can see the first 16 at your channel bank 1 and then when you go to uh, the B position, you can see the other 16 channels. So that's a pretty cool feature that they have in this radio as well. Um, the difference between that and the Motorola is the uh, Motorola's A, B, and C 
you can set up to do different things. Like I have uh, mine set up for scan list and scan list editing um, in, in one of my radios and however on another one like my APX 8000, um, it just changes zones. So whatever the first three zones are, let's say I have ham VHF1, ham VHF2, and ham VHF3. Uh, the A position will be ham VHF1, B will be ham uh, VHF2, and uh, C will be ham VHF3. Uh, programmable shortcut menus, continuing on, you can set these to do whatever you want to. These are gonna be your uh, keypads, like your um, uh, number one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And there's a ton of different options here to choose from. Uh, View SA display, that's the uh, situational awareness display. So if you have another uh, radio that you are, uh, let's say you and a friend both have Unity XG100 and uh, you're talking via uh, digital P25 and your GPS is enabled on your radios, you can actually pull up this uh, situation, situational awareness display, and it kind of looks like a little uh, radar screen. It's pretty cool and it'll show uh, about their, their bearing and distance from you. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of mine because I don't wanna change my settings. Um, power up options. If you would like to protect your radio, you can select a power up pin uh, that will require you to put a pin number in your radio before you can access it that may be beneficial to some of you uh, some of you it may be annoying to <laughs> um, my power up selections I just have mine set to default I don't have mine set to any system or group but you can uh, so in the default position that means if I go to channel 8 and then zone 2 or system 2 uh, when I turn my radio off and then turn it back on again, it's going to be on that same uh, system and channel versus if you set this up to default onto something, whenever you turn the radio on, you'll get that here. Okay. Now let's go up. Let's see. I don't think there's any more. Uh, audio settings. Yes, this is a big one too. Audio and uh, display settings, which is on a different option here. Uh, audio settings. I turn my noise cancellation off. I have heard from others in different reports that <laughs> it was very difficult to hear me with the noise cancellation turned on, so I decided to turn that off. Uh, PTT radio and accessory, I have that turned on. Obviously, the speaker I have turned on. Uh, tones and keypad tones. Me personally, I don't like to hear those tones when I press buttons on the keypad or the side key, so I keep those options off. Uh, display options, display settings, here we go. This is a cool one here. Uh, one of the things I like about this radio is you do have the ability uh, to set the backlight on the main screen and the top screen to be momentary. Um, me, I like mine to be on and bright at all times, but you can set this up to be momentary. And whenever it is at its maximum brightness, for example here, you'll have eight uh, the, the value 8 which is how bright it is uh, in lumens I, I don't know what this equates to uh, and then after 15 seconds it will dim the uh, screen the the main screen and it, and it goes for the same for the uh, top screen too you can you can set this up for momentary as well and set your uh, brightness for the top screen I don't really use mine on mine a whole lot so I just set it to five you know we're not I'm not carrying it in a in a chest holster or anything like that so I won't need to like quickly glance down and look to see where I'm at um, <clears throat> most of the time I'm just carrying the uh, the radio with me and I, I just look at the main screen uh, so it's a couple different uh, options there to get you started uh, under uh, general options here uh, you may copy my settings if that helps you uh, I don't have EDAX on this radio I don't need EDAX on this radio uh, so those options really aren't that pertinent to me I guess personality lockout I definitely keep that off uh, but you can turn it on and you can lock your personality <laughs> to a computer if you'd like I don't because sometimes when I'm mobile I need to program 
my uh, radio. So yeah, those are my uh, those are my option settings. And what I'm going to do is click out of my personality, and we're going to get going on the tutorial personality. Okay, all right, let's get started on actually programming the radio, the moment you've all been waiting for, I'm sure. Um, so, uh, this is RPM. Uh, the nice thing about RPM is that you can just create yourself a brand new uh, personality. There is no prior code plug needed because all the features are built into the radio as well. Uh, but they do it a little bit differently than Mother M. And... Um, it's, it's good to be able to do that and if you have a feature that's not enabled in your radio I'll, it'll let you know so like for example some of these unities have the uh, wideband disabled feature on which I think is feature 50 I could be wrong someone correct me if I'm wrong if I remember correctly though uh, feature 50 and if you get that feature removed it will not restrict your wideband uh, capabilities on the UHF band for like uh, GMRS and FRS um, there are some uh, people out there that you may run across that could potentially help you with that uh, I can tell you that it is not as easy to do as some other platforms um, but it is possible and there are people out there that uh, would be willing to help, I believe. Um, <clears throat> so that, that is a feature. If you look into purchasing one of these radios, uh, it's going to be few far in between, but that will significantly increase the radio value as having that feature uh, taken off. Uh, my radio does not have the UHF wideband restriction on it. I was able to get it removed, fortunately. Uh, so it's pretty wide open as far as... Uh, what I can program into it. Uh, it is a four band uh, or five band, whatever you want to call it, uh, VHF, UHF, 700, 800. So it's got everything uh, wide open. Um, so anyway, let's get to it. Um, first, we're going to open this up. This is sets right here. Remember, uh, we don't do zones in this territory. Uh, so don't even worry about zones. We won't even be messing with this. Uh, this is just going to cause a lot of confusion, and it's it's really not necessary. Um, so we're going to open up systems by double-clicking on the uh, systems tree root. And with a brand new mission plan, as you can see, we have nothing available, right? Nothing available at all. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. Uh, we can click add new system and we'll just type in uh, ham conventional and are we is, and, and you choose your system type over here so it's either going to be a conventional or a project 25 conventional um, the difference is if you choose a conventional set you can you can do conventional UHF frequencies or VHF frequencies now if you choose uh, project 25 conventional the cool thing about that is when you set your personality up as a project 25 conventional whenever you go to change the options and program the channel itself you can tell it to be analog instead of p25 um, and there and in your um, systems menu in your radio whenever you choose the differences here you'll see that one one of the icons has p25 next to it and uh, the other one <clears throat> does not. It's just it's just it's just called con uh, conventional. It's got a little A icon next to it. You may have seen it in the little snippets in the beginning of the video here. Uh, so for the sake of uh, programming, we're just going to choose conventional for now because most of us are going to be around uh, conventional uh, repeaters or um, conventional simplex with others. Uh, and as you notice, once we created that. Uh, that conventional system here, this uh, conventional tab, uh, opened up right here. So what we're, we're going to do is click on it, <clears throat> and we're presented with even more options, right? So type 99 decode this table here. Um, I don't mess with. I don't have any of this, uh, any of these checked or turned on on mine. Um, default sequence, you can leave that alone. Security key, we don't have any security keys. Uh, talk around indication. 
um, you can select transmit and receive for these so it'll show you if uh, you're in talk around I'm gonna show you if someone else is in talk around pretty cool right uh, private options here again we don't have encryptions um, no ages no pro voice nothing like that so chances are yours will be like mine and not highlighted uh, MDC ID I choose 8641 for mine you can choose whatever you'd like to do for yours uh, if you want to do 1111 or 1234 that's fine too um, there is a, a local repeater around I mean that's uh, p25 so I uh, everybody knows I'm 8641 right so when I key up on that repeater um, my MDC ID is 8641 now uh, for the Astro ID which they call it something different here and we'll go over that when we get to it um, I use my DMR ID for that uh, kind of weird but uh, most most p25 repeater owners uh, would appreciate if you used your DMR ID as your quote P25 or Astro ID uh, and then for MDC uh, you can just choose four numbers like again my, I choose 8641 okay so um, after we get into here you'll notice this this one right here conventional set now this is VTAC NOAA there's actually nothing in here uh, so I don't know if that's like a little bug or something or if it's just something that gets default added to a brand new mission plan But we're not going to select that uh, What we are going to do is we're going to click on this button here that says conventional set Right here, so go ahead and click on that Now this may start to be uh, looking a little bit more familiar to you as far as what we can do so uh, we have the conventional frequency set tab and we have the P25 conventional frequency set tab. Now, if you create a new P25 conventional frequency set in here, it is going to create a P25 conventional system under here. So let's start out with conventional. Conventional set name. We're going to call this uh, VHF1. And that's that's our conventional set name so let's go ahead and type in simplex if I can get around my microphone here uh, two I'll see if it'll let me do an M in there I don't think it will now so we'll just do simplex this is gonna be the short name uh, the short name right here is what's gonna show up on your top display and the long name is what is going to show up on the uh, system part of the display on the large front display so you could do simplex two meters and we'll do 146.52 whoops that's another thing uh, if you hit if you <laughs> if you go in and you type your frequency and hit enter it's going to close this window out so what you can also do is do your frequency and just click out of that box so we'll put it back to 146.52 uh, you're probably wondering what this is TXCG and RXCG these are going to be your PL tones right Harris calls them channel guard but this is where your PL tones are going to go so when you go to program a repeater in and they, they have a PL of like 67 or 131.8 you'll put those here but for the sake of this programming tutorial under uh, 2 meter simplex we won't put that there uh, vote scan you can keep that off because we are not going to be on a trunk system, so we don't need voting. Uh, power selection, low, high, bandwidth. This is what I was telling you about right here. Now, if your radio has uh, wideband disabled, you're only going to be able uh, to select narrow when you start putting in UHF frequencies. So, for example, um, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, new conventional set we'll just call it UHF1 and we're gonna put simplex and simplex 70 centimeters and we're gonna go 446.000 for our transmit and receive oh, look at that it automatically did it for us and on this one we're gonna we're gonna select wide um, if, if, if the wideband disabled feature was on your radio, you can go ahead and program it with this. However, when you go to that um, system, you're going to get an error all over the screen and it's going to be really annoying. 
So what you could do is just come in here, select this to narrow, reprogram the radio, uh, add this mission plan, or re re write, overwrite this mission plan to the radio, and you won't have any problems. Uh, I'm going to leave mine on wide, obviously, because I, I don't have that uh, issue. Uh, power, high. These options here, CCT, you can, you can leave that checked. Signaling, uh, you can select MDC if you'd like to. Uh, that way, if somebody else has a digital capable radio uh, on the other side of a repeater or within simplex range, when you key up, they will they will see your uh, MDC. In this case, mine was 8641. Um, scan, that's another good one to add. So let me tell you how the scan works on this radio. So VHF, uh, whatever channel you have, we're just gonna start renaming these. Let's just put three channels in here. Um, whatever, whatever channel you have in here. Whenever you're in this this system, if you turn your scan on, like let's say you load up VHF one system. And you turn your scan on you're not going to be able to scan anything so what I like about the Harris stuff is you, you don't have to make a separate scan list if you want to scan within the system that you've selected in this case VHF one so for every single one of these uh, channels here we'll select scan and that way whenever I'm in this system VHF one on my radio and I turn my scan feature on it's going to scan simplex S2, S3. And subsequently, we can do the same for the uh, UHF channels. So let's uh, put a couple things in here real quick just to give us something. And U3. Okay. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit okay after we have programmed this conventional frequency set. Again, we're not on P25 yet, but we'll get there in a different section. And we're just gonna hit okay. And now we can select from our drop down menu. Oh no, what do we do now? Well, we can tie this system name to our VHF1 set which are going to be only these channels within this conventional set. So how do we how do we how do we add both? How do we do our VHF1 and our UHF in the same? Well, we won't be able to do that. So what we would have to do is we would have to uh, come back up to this set, right click on it, rename, and we'll just rename it uh, ham1 and then we'll click okay. And then we would add our UHF frequencies in these uh, ch channels below our VHF. So what's ha what, watch what happens when we click OK. Boom. It's going to change to the HAM1 conventional set. So this is really nice if you have a bunch of channels or talk groups that you want to roll into uh, one system or you can split them up and you can come over here and you can add a new system and call it UHF one and then come back over to the conventional tab and select UHF one and tie your conventional set to the UHF one system that you've just created and then click OK and when I click OK I want you to pay attention to what happens uh, right over here in this area now we have a drop down check that out so we'll open that up and there's our conventional uh, sets right here. Um, real quick annoying thing about RPM is uh, you can change this window size all you want, but this is all you're getting. <laughs> so I would uh, I would get used to this small box right here. Um, and then what we would do, for example, is if we wanted to load this into your um, uh, Harris radio via Bluetooth, you would uh, come up here and you're you're gonna click the uh, Bluetooth button. I'm 
the Bluetooth button here or the Unity product management button. And I'm going to go ahead and click mine. I've already got my radio connected and paired to my laptop. And what I can do um, is add this tutorial mission plans into my um, uh, Unity. Now these are the ones I already have in there. I don't want to I don't want to change anything about these. Um, I just want to program tutorial in mine. So what I can do is I can select tutorial and then click program and it's going to um, put this mission plan into my radio. I actually have two in there right now. My KO4 GLF Georgia mission plan and my uh, interoperability mission plan with all the uh, VTACs and UTACs, VMEDs and UMEDs all that good stuff in the uh, interoperability mission plan. Uh, we'll do this in a different uh, section, but I'm not gonna do this right now. So I'm just gonna click uh, cancel and cancel out of that and continue on with uh, setting up P25 on the next section. Okay, so now we're going to move on to P25 conventional sets. Uh, in the last section, we learned how to program normal, regular, everyday, analog, conventional frequencies into the radio. And now we are going to step it up just a tiny notch and do some digital programming. Uh, it's very easy. You'd be surprised. It's... Um, it's a lot easier than it might seem. Uh, RPM and the way that it's set up makes everything seriously easy. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because uh, dealing with uh, Moto Turbo and Astro and APX Suite uh, and all the differences between them, well, what I like about RPM is there is a ton of different radios that you can program with our with RPM uh, unlike some other manufacturers that have a different CPS uh, programming software per radio or maybe you have one programming software that covers a small group or a series of radios uh, versus this one that covers a, a ton more um, like this one will do the XG100 mobile and RPM2 will also do the XG100 mobile. But uh, we're not on RPM2 today, that's for a different video and we'll uh, we'll talk about that one too down the line. Uh, so anyway, uh, what we can do now, uh, what I didn't show you before in the last section was uh, if you click on uh, the sets tree drop down and click on your conventional frequency set it's going to bring you right to your conventional sets or if you double click on systems um, go to the conventional tab and then click on your conventional set it will take you back to the same spot so there's a, a, a couple of different roads lead to the same destination uh, so for the sake of the way we're going to do this we're going to be doing everything from the uh, systems menu here uh, and the reason why is because it kind of gives a general overview of how everything ties together because as you know best, uh, based on this one you tell your conventional set to be tied to your uh, different uh, conventional system that you created so we're going to go back to general and we're going to add a new system we are going to call this ham p25 and we're going to choose project 25 conventional uh, radio button right here so we'll click OK and this opens up the project 25 conventional tab look at that very cool so um, we're gonna do the same thing it's a little bit different layout and remember the MDC we can type the MDC in now uh, what I was telling you about your uh, DMR ID or Astro ID in this case you're gonna put in that for your unit ID so mine is three one seven one seven six one um, really don't care if you look it up you can look up my call sign and uh, figure everything out for yourself so I know some people like to block this out personally I really don't care uh, encryption uh, 
I don't have any keys loaded onto this radio, so there's no encryption. And uh, unfortunately, this radio does not do ARC4, which is what Motorola's ADP is. And um, and some of you may be wondering, well, it says it right here in the encryption menu. Why won't it? Well, let's see what happens when I select it. Boom. This radio type does not support ARC4 keys. Uh, that's going to make me put a number in. I need to go back to unencrypted. So um, the XG100 mobile will do ARC4. Why they didn't put it in the XG100P, I have no idea. Uh, maybe that was to upsell on the next generation, the XL200P, which does have ARC4 capabilities and uh, DES. I'm not really sure. Now, if your radio does have DES, um, and then in the key uh, manager, you would you would set up your keys so like key one or key two um if you if you did set up des now my radio does not have des it only has aes uh, but i do not have an aes loader for mine so we're just not going to worry about that right now uh, custom scan list nothing here security key there is none i call set and p25 conventional frequency set uh, we're not going to worry about that uh, emergency display and emergency audio, I just leave it checked on mine. Um, emergency behavior, I just select emergency call. Uh, talk around indication, I'll change that to transmit and receive. Radio text link, we're not going to do anything there. Unit registration, we're definitely not going to be doing anything there. And the um, FNE lid field network, uh, something I can't remember exactly what the FNE uh, stands for but uh, you can just leave that as the default so if you leave this as the default uh, interesting thing about this radio is it knows this is the default number and this number will actually it, when you go into the um, channel info on in your radio once you've loaded this uh, mission plan into it uh, funny thing is it'll actually say disabled <laughs> so I just leave that number in there and uh, I don't mess with it there's there's no reason to um, so go over this again remember unit ID that's your Astro ID if you're doing Motorola uh, which is the same thing as what you want to put as your DMR ID and then your MDC ID like again you can make this up I have my own 8641 uh, that's my initials and the number one <clears throat> which is why I chose that excuse me all right then click OK and we got an error why did we get an error well because we don't have any P25 uh, frequencies program so we'll click OK and we'll click uh, our P25 conventional tab and then we're gonna click on this button here conventional frequency sets all right so it's gonna bring us back to the same uh, type of menu structure as the conventional frequency set but it is a little bit different because it is p25 and not analog so we'll name this ham p25 click ok and what we're going to do is we are going to make a p25 uh, simplex 2 meter channel and a p25 simplex 70 centimeter channel uh, so let's go ahead 146.52 146.52 cool and here is where you would select between analog and P25 uh, voice modes. So remember in the last section, what we were talking about was that if you just made everything, if you just created nothing but a P25 conventional frequency set, you can tell it to be analog instead of P25. Some of you may uh, benefit from that than, more than others. Um, me, I, I have some mixed in, some analogs and some P25s in this tab, uh, and then I have an entirely different system for just P25 frequencies around me. And they, like I said, there's quite a few up here. Uh, depending on where you're at, you may have an entire network of P25 repeaters. Uh, over here we just have individually owned uh, repeaters so uh, or you can do p25 uh, simplex from one radio to another so that's pretty cool that's definitely doable definitely acceptable 
Uh, so let's go ahead and add the other one. So simplex again. And simplex 70 cm. And we're just going to put 446.0. And that should automatically do it for that one. Yep, P25. Make sure you choose uh, C4FM as your. Um, uh, it's actual actually modulation, but it is narrow bandwidth, but it's C4FM modulation, which um, some of you may be thinking, well, hell, that's uh, Yesu. Uh, that's what they use for YSF, uh, digital YSF, and that, that is correct. They, it's, it's, it's different because it's not P25, but it is C4FM. It's a pretty neat little uh, thing there. Um, the NAC. So... Uh, NAC is going to be your um, your your system NAC. So if you have a repeater, uh, most P25 repeaters are set up to default to 293. Uh, some of them you may have something else like 7A F, right, for your um, transmit and receive. And if that's the case, then you would just uh, put that here. Uh, I'm assuming if you've gotten this far. Uh, you have decided to make this purchase of such a caliber of a radio over a um, everyday ham radio. I'm assuming you know about repeater book and radio reference by now, so uh, I shouldn't have to explain these to you. Uh, if you would like for me to explain these to you, uh, we can do that in a different video, but I'm going to assume you've already you've already gotten that. Uh, okay, so moving on down. So CCT, we'll leave that uh, checked. We'll go ahead and click scan. And we'll go to the other simplex channel and click scan on that because when we are in our ham 25 conventional frequency set and we want to scan all of these channels uh, we can do that now if you have scan unchecked and let's say you have a third channel uh, here oops this key and let's say you have a third channel here um, and this is scanned. It'll it'll scan all the way down. It'll scan this one. It won't scan this one, but it'll scan this one. Me personally, I like to be able to scan every single thing. Um, this is another really cool feature, which is in every radio. But uh, TX Busy. Why don't you go ahead and check that? And I'm going to tell you why. If you're on a digital P25 repeater and somebody's talking, uh, and you and you go to key up. Well, if they ended up getting there first, when you go to key up, it's going to say, hey, there's another uh, subscriber unit on this frequency pair. Uh, I'm going to yell at you and say, no, you can't talk right now because there's somebody else. So this will prevent, uh, quote, doubling on P25, which you could either win or lose that on p25 it's not like analog where you hear two people at once it's, it's a little bit different than that but uh, just for the sake of um, your your fellow uh, amateur radio members on the same repeater I would go ahead and just click TX busy that way it yells at you and says nope you screwed up you weren't fast enough go away <laughs> Uh, situational awareness again that's something you can uh, you can do if that suits your fancy I'm gonna leave that off uh, data we're not we're not passing any data over these so we're gonna we're gonna leave that unchecked we're not on a trunking system and we probably won't ever be on a trunking system with amateur radio unless uh, a lot of money gets involved and a lot of people get involved and the infrastructure starts getting set up and then we can have a whole trunking, a ham trunking system with talk groups and everything. Although that would be super duper cool. I don't see that happening in the near future at least. Maybe with some Raspberry Pi stuff down the road. Who knows? Anyway, uh, up to the top here, set options. I kind of ignored this in the beginning because this really doesn't um, affect us right now. Uh, but we're not doing any uh, groups. So uh, we, can just, we can just leave that be. And then click OK and then we're gonna be at our ham p25 system we're gonna come over here we're gonna choose our ham p25 conventional frequency set uh, i like to name these the same because of consistency but if you want to you can actually go in here and uh, 
uh, change this to maybe, I don't know, ham dig for digital. Click OK, click OK. And that's going to actually change uh, change it in your uh, frequency set right here. I call set. We don't have I call. Don't worry about that. Uh, and then click OK again. And now we have a new menu option under system. So we have P25 conventional. So now we have conventional and our P25 conventional. So we can double click on this and bring this up and see our different systems. If we had multiple P25 systems, we would we would show those listed here. Um, all right, so on the screen of the radio, again, in the software, it's called systems, but when you actually choose zones on your uh, radio through the menu, it's going to show these in this order. Okay, well, what if you don't like that? What if you say, well, I want ham P25 to be on top of everything else? No problem. Go to your uh, general systems. Let's start over real quick. Double click, go to systems, your general overview tab. And what you're going to do is you're going to right click and you're going to move system up. You're going to right click and you're going to move system up again. Now, when you have a bunch of systems, like 30 of them, and you start moving them around, it, it's going, it, it's, you have to right click and move, right click and move every time. Um, so while we're in here, we might as well go ahead and rename them. Ham P25. So the long name, I'm just going to, like I said, I like consistency here. So Ham P25. That's going to be the system name, which will show up on the screen of the radio. It's going to show you the system that you're in. It's going to show you the uh, channel that you're in as well. Uh, Ham Conventional. You might rename that Ham Conventional. Uh, the long name can really take quite quite a bit of uh, string characters in this field here. So once you look at everything and look at your systems, you will you will be happy to know <laughs> that you can spell out most things that you want to. Uh, UHF one, UHF ham one. Click OK. Um, yeah. Pretty simple, right? Nothing to it. Um, again, zones. We're not going to do anything with zones. We're not worried about that. Uh, group sets. So, pretty cool little thing here. Um, some repeater owners on P25 have the ability to set up talk groups, and those talk groups can do things like limit analog traffic so let's say if you're in p25 mixed mode you can still receive analog traffic but we don't want to do that we want a talk group that reroutes any analog traffic out of our talk group this is where we'll get into group sets i'm going to do this on a completely different video however because this starts getting pretty complicated uh, I mainly in this one wanted to show you how to set up your your general radio options and how to get started with at least being able to um, uh, give a give a basic understanding of how to program channels and frequencies into your radio and how the uh, frequency sets tie into the um, systems remember each system has its own conventional set and when you get into talk groups it, it, it gets a little funky because uh, you're you have to uh, like for example on mine i have a a tack for uh, my local repeater i have a completely different system it's a tack and it's only four talk groups but i can select that and instead of my channel knob selecting the different um, channels, like simplex, simplex, and third, uh, when I am in that system, it, that the, the channel knob now becomes the talk group knob in that system. So we can call a system a zone. You can refer to them by that. 
because when you start loading these into your radio, uh, the way to choose these systems is to use the zone um, uh, icon in the menu. It's kind of weird because that there's no consistency on that and I don't like it. <laughs> I wish they would just call systems zones, but they don't. But it's something to get used to. It's a little bit different than probably what most of us are used to. Um, uh, I've made this video because I've noticed there is not a uh, Harris programming tutorial video out there and uh, I am going to make more. Um, so on the next go around we'll talk about uh, group sets which is going to be our talk groups and how that ties into our systems. Uh, and then if you really want to get going, uh, maybe down the line, maybe we can get into trunked frequency sets uh, for things such as NAS, but uh, I'll have to decide whether I want to get into that or not. I know there's some ethical questioning around that, um, but we'll see. I'll think about it. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope this was very informative and helpful to you. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to do whatever I can to answer those questions. Uh, if there is something you would maybe like to see on the next video that I can show you, uh, please post that as well and I will try to oblige. Uh, thanks again, this is UnityXG, as my username, and ham call sign uh, KO4GLF, and we will see you next time.